All right, welcome back to another video, my friends. My name is Bijan, in case anybody is new here. And in this video, I'm going to be going over a trade that was a little bit of a swing trade, a small swing trade, still a swing trade either way, um, in which I made $1,600 kind of overnight. I mean, it was yesterday to today. Um, it wasn't exactly like I got into it yesterday right before the market closed and closed it out this morning. Uh, but either way, got in it yesterday, closed it out today. You can see here that it shows 925. Um, that's because I was in a profit position yesterday when I closed the trade out. I was in a profit of about 675. Uh, so 675 from yesterday plus the 925 from today. Uh, you guys get the point. I'll break it down for you guys on the calculations and everything like that here. Uh, but anyways, we were trading puts on Disney and this was a trade directly from the watch list as well. Uh, I usually don't like to make videos on swing trade uh, type of trades because it's kind of hard to do the calculations and it's really hard for new people to keep track of and follow along. Uh, but this was a, a, a trade. It was a little bit of a choppy one, if you will. Uh, but either way, I think it'll serve as like a good way of showing a few different ideas in terms of how I trade um, that can maybe even help some of the watch list subscribers as well. Uh, to see what I mean when I say things like, you know, we can have a primary profit target and then a secondary profit target. And also just kind of showing the idea of, you know, shorting the pops, adding in and things like that. Um, if you if you watch this, you'll be able to pick up on things. Obviously, if I'm going to have to sit here and point every single little thing out, uh, we'll be here forever. Uh, but anyways, that's besides the fact that I don't want to start rambling here. So uh, it was a $1,600 profit. Let's just get into the, the little breakdown of it real briefly for you guys here. I initially wanted to get in it around the 130 area that's what i was hoping for uh, and i started in i guess you can say half size light size right here right around the 129.50 area i started in 10 contracts right at 6 45 a.m yesterday on tuesday uh, i had a next week expiration just because i knew that disney is a slow mover i knew i might needed to have you know hold it held it overnight um you get my point. So anyways, next week expiry, we were trading puts. Puts means you make money when the stock goes down. That's why I basically entered higher and exited the trade lower for anyone that's new. Uh, but anyways, moving forward here. So I had 10 contracts at 645, and that's me. I was starting in really light size right there uh, as I was kind of hoping for a pop closer to the 130 area to add in. But I did want to kind of get into this right here at this area, uh, the 645 here. Because see, I like to put it on the one minute chart for you guys so you can get more of a specific idea of like right where I got in. Uh, so you can see right 645 kind of caught the high there. Uh, I could kind of tell that it was running out of steam a little bit. So I did want to start in so I could make sure that I'm in the trade. And I also wanted to leave room to add in if we did get the push to the area that I initially wanted to. Uh, and that's pretty much that. So long story short, we didn't get more of a push, so I didn't add in. It actually ended up dropping down uh, to where I would have initially wanted to take some profits. Uh, but I was like, all right, dude, I'm in it light size. Let's see if I can maybe get another pop to add in on. And that's basically what happened. We got a, a, kind of ripped right back up to the 129.50 area, started to lose some steam, started to run out of steam there, rejected that area a little bit. So that's when I went in and I added in. 15 contracts because at this point I wasn't very I don't know what the word is very confident that we were going to hit the 130 area so I was like okay let me just add into a little bit more of a stronger position here I still didn't go to like a full full size position you know um because I did want to leave a little bit of room just to add in but I still you know kind of went into what I'd call an average position size if you will not light size not heavy size but you know still kind of hey how you doing we're involved if you know what I mean so that's where we were, 25 contracts. And if you notice, it's right around the same price. 310 is when I initially got in, then 315. So I kind of added in right at the break even point. Uh, for the sake of the calculation, we're just going to calculate 25 contracts times 315. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but, you know, there's that 10 and that 5 cent difference, which is going to equip $50? It'll, yeah, it'll equal $50. So we're going to add $50 to the profit at the end. Uh, but anyway, so moving forward with a brief calculation here for you guys. Anybody that's new is going to benefit from this. Uh, we got 25 contracts 
at 315 each, let's say, the way options works is one is equivalent to 100. So when you see 315, it's actually 315. So you just multiply 315 times 25. So the cost of the trade, the total uh, amount, I guess you can say invested into the trade was 7,875. It was actually 7,825. 7, uh, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll just, you know, say 7,875 here and we'll add that 50 at the end. Um, and that, that's pretty much that. That was the cost of the trade. Now, that doesn't mean that if I was wrong, I was going to lose 7,825 here. Just to kind of give my little basic examples, like I like to say, is if you buy a car for $7,875, you know, let's say, thinking that you can sell it for $10,000 and then you find out, oh, something's wrong with it. I don't know. It might need new tires or I bought the wrong one or my estimate was off. I was wrong, whatever it is. It doesn't mean you lost your whole entire $7,875. You know, you can go and take a loss, go sell the car. Uh, you get what I'm trying to say here. It's not like you're just going to dump the car on the side of the road or take it to a junkyard and say, all right, well, that's that. Uh, so same thing applies here. That's not what we were like, you know, risking. That's just how much it costs. Because some people like to ask, well, how much did you cost? How much did you put into that trade to make this much money? Um, that's that's the answer for you guys. For this particular trade, the one thousand six hundred dollar profit, uh, you know, had seven thousand eight hundred and seventy five in it, and that's pretty much that on the entry, and that's where I got into the trade. Now, this, as I said, we were trading puts, so puts means you make money as the value as the stock goes down. So I was in a profit position because the stock did go down. We were actually right around the one. 28.50 area uh, when we ended the day yesterday. So that's why it doesn't show the whole $1,600 profit here. Uh, so anyways, we opened up. We got a little bit of a pop to the 130 area. And at this point, I was like, all right, you know what? Let, I don't really need to add into it at this point. Uh, you know, I held it overnight, had a little bit of time decay. So I didn't really want to add into it. I said, I'm okay with the position that I'm in. Let's hold it out. Uh, you know, he was still holding below some pretty key areas here. So I didn't really panic out or anything like that. And this is where I closed out the trade right around 11.20 here. You can see I closed out 15 of them at 11.19. Then right 10 minutes before the end of the day, I closed out the other, the final 10 uh, right at 12.50. Looking at it here on the chart here, I'll put it on the one minute for you guys to make it easier for you guys to see. Sorry for my excessive arrows there. Um... Right here, right around the 128, basically as we broke the 128.50 area is where I locked in 15 of the contracts. And then the other 10, I was holding to the 127.50 area, uh, which that was the plan by the watch list as well. That's what I was saying. You know, I'll get in this area with a primary profit target here and a secondary profit target there. So I'll close, like, you know, half the trade or maybe a little bit more than half and I'll hold a little bit more playing with profits to see if we can get that next area, which I had an alert on and we pinged right that alert and I pulled my phone out close the trade out. And that was pretty much that right at the end of the day. And to be honest with you, even if it didn't ping it, I probably would have checked right back in, you know, like probably 1255, 1257 and would have closed it out anyways, because I didn't want to hold it for an additional night, especially since we already hit the primary profit target and all that. Uh, so that's pretty much that that was the trade. Uh, you know, as I like to say, you know, puts means you make money as the value of the stock goes down as it, the value of the stock decreased, the value of our puts increased and i'll basically go ahead and show that over here and this just j goes to show that you can trade you know upwards with the stock going up with it going down you can day trade you can swing trade you can do all of this um, again i don't like to do videos too much on swing trades just because it's like you know hard to keep track of they take too long people start to nag because of the videos long uh you know how it goes for those of you that have been here for a while um anyway so now to wrap it up with a quick calculation the final calculation for you all if you remember, the cost of the trade was 7875 Then I sold 15 of them at 355 So we'll do 355 times 15 which is 5325 is what we sold that for. Then we sold the final 10 for 4100 Easy calculation right there. Four thousand, or I'm sorry, for 410 each, we sold 10 of them. So that calculation is selling it for 4,100. So basically, you can add the 5,325 to the 4,100. The total amount that we sold the trade for was 9,425. Then you can subtract the cost of the trade, which we said was 7,875. That gives you 1,550. And then we're going to add that $50 that we kind of put to the side earlier from the you know the difference here that i mentioned uh and that puts us at that 1600 profit uh even though it just shows the 925 there on the day 
Um, that's pretty much that, guys. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I tried to just briefly touch base on a few ideas here, a few ideas there, kind of cater to everybody, you know, help the beginners out, help some of the other people out, help some of the subscribers out, help some of the students out, so on and so forth. So anyways, this is the part where I usually start to ramble. So as I mentioned, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did want to join our watch list to kind of see, you know, what I'm trading, the watch list, it's basically a list of stocks. It has two sections to it, the swing trade, the day trade, um, you know, I, I give, you know, just a few stocks that I'll be watching with the game plan, basically saying, hey, I'll be looking for it to do this so we can enter here with a profit target here and a risk here, so on and so forth. So if you're interested in that, I'll put some links in the description below so you can sign up through our website. Uh, if you want to follow me on social media, you know the deal, who is Bijan T across the majority of the social media websites. So I'll put that on the description as well. Uh, and that's pretty much that, guys. If you are new and you enjoyed the video, I usually ask at the beginning of videos, and I realize, you know what, it doesn't make sense to ask somebody to subscribe and put the notification bell on and all that if they haven't even watched the video yet. I mean, how do they know if they, you know, if they even like it or not? So if you did enjoy it, please be so kind. Subscribe, put the notifications on, all that other good stuff that they ask you to do, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.